Look at those fucking clouds. They could fuck off. I'm going down to, um, from Sananad, I've just gone through Sananad, down to Avoca, um, through the, uh, the Pyrenees Ranges, Victorian Pyrenees, something like that. Uh, anyway, the green stretch between, uh, Sananad and Avoca. Um, it was bloody cold. Um, I think it's currently about 12 degrees. It's, uh, it's about 11 o'clock, 11.30 in the morning. Um, so when I left, it was pretty chilly. Um, I've actually got my, uh, my dirt bike gloves on now. Um, but, uh, I, I had, um, on the way up, um, my, uh, winter gloves. And I haven't worn these for years, um, since I had a road bike, probably 10 years ago. And, um, God, they're horrible to ride in. I mean, they kept me warm, but Jesus, not very comfortable. I can't move, I don't know, don't like it. Uh, so happy to have my other gloves back on now. Uh, this road, I've done this road, uh, it's about 60k. Uh, most of it's just dirt road. There's, um, down towards Avoca, it gets a bit hilly and um, some interesting terrain. Nothing crazy or anything. Um, yeah, so... see how we go I've um the bike has now done 750 kilometers oops shit hang on I've got to put it into off-road mode when I did that 300k or so with Mark uh, last weekend I um I experimented a bit and I really I actually much prefer I think ABS in off-road mode um, I like being able to lock up the back wheel uh, having that um, maybe a little bit more feel I guess but um, yeah, I'm, I haven't done this track for uh, this this route for about three years. I did it on the DR650. Um, so uh, when I did it, it was in summer and it was fine. Um, I don't know what it's going to be like. We've had a lot of rain. Um, it could be it could be muddy. It could be slippery. Um, particularly down further, uh, there's a lot of uh, hills, um, and I think I recall some fairly steep hills. Uh, they, were, they were easy, but but steep. Um, so if they're um, if they're wet and clay slippery shit, uh, that could be interesting. But uh, we'll see how we go. Something I thought I'd mention is I um, I've always ridden in the you know, off road. Uh, I've always had uh, you know uh, dirt bike pants, you know uh, motocross pants, um, the um, the canvassy sort of stuff. Um, and I like them. I like them because they've got inbuilt stretchy material. Um, they're generally pretty loose. Um, and you can move in them. Uh, I'm a pretty big guy. I've got pretty um, big uh, legs. We'll call it muscly legs. Um, and so um, generally pants can be a little bit restrictive. Uh, so I've always been quite happy with the, uh, the motocross pants. Um, however, uh, which way am I going? This way. Um, I just bought myself some um, Kevlar jeans. Um, I think they're an Australian brand. They're a bit cheaper than the others. Um, they're, they're quite. They're actually the most comfortable that I tried on. Anyway, I've also got thermals underneath them, so I'm feeling a little bit restricted. And um, when I first jumped on the bike this morning, I even found it was like harder to harder to touch the ground. It's like um, it it's restricted my uh, my available in seam uh, to to get to the ground, but. Um, Anyway, so we'll see how that goes today off-road um, in these pants. I may just get used to it and it won't be a big deal. Because um, they are actually quite comfortable to wear. Um, they, I just don't have as much, I guess, flexibility and movement in them. Um, we'll see how it goes. So what I find um, is really useful, um, I find that when I'm on just doing highway riding, which I've just done 100, over 100k of highway, um, sitting on you know 100 kilometers an hour or whatever is you get into that road bike sort of uh, frame of mind um, And so you've been on the highway for for hours or whatever and then you get onto the dirt and you're kind of still in that um, That road bike frame and I find I just don't I can fall in the trap of not moving my body um, The way I should be uh, in dirt um, So what I find is uh, as soon as I get into the dirt I just do um, I stand up on the pegs for a start, I just move around a little bit on the pegs and um, just little things like going backwards and forwards over um, over these between the two tracks 
um, you know you got the gravelly stuff in the middle and um, you know it just makes you yeah the bikes gonna move around and it just gets you used to um, used to how the bike is moving in the dirt um, and it's just to reset your brain I think well it works for me um, so even if I've been on um, just ordinary dirt road and then I'll get into um, sand like in, you know in the desert sort of stuff um, I'll even do it you know in the desert so um, where you know it's particularly harder I guess but um, you know you go in between the two arches uh, uh, wheel not arches wheel fucking ruts whatever and um, and just get a feel of that bike getting a little bit out of control because I think my, when you do come off um, quite often it's because you um, you puck it up a bit and um, yeah you shit yourself and then as soon as you shit yourself you um, your brain stops working um, and you you know you, you move wrong or whatever and you come off it's a bit slippery Oh, that's very slippery. Ah. Bloody mud. Slippery shit. I can handle sand, I can handle rocks, I can handle anything. It's just slippery shit. Freaks me out. This is particularly slippery though. It's um, it's like soil, fresh soil. It's just all wet now. It's. I think it's, it must have been recently graded. I say it has been recently graded. <laughs> I almost lost it then. Oh. <laughs> I lost the front wheel for a second then. From what I'm sensing with this bike is that it'll pretty well go anywhere. You've just got to, um, you can't go anywhere fast, I think, um, off-road. I mean, you've just got to, um, it's a big, it's a big bike to pull up. Uh, it's a big bike to throw around. Um, so you've just got to be a little bit more um, purposeful. It's sort of and controlled about it. You can't just you can't just go fucking nuts on it and um, and hope that everything will be all right. Um, I mean that's kind of how I ride the XR. But uh, I think this you got to be um, a little bit more in control and focused and strategic, I guess. Yeah, this is really nice just enough hills to you know make it interesting and um, it's nothing hard just just really enjoyable it's good I'm doing most of this in second gear at the moment second or third gear um, I do have a, a smaller front sprocket um, one tooth smaller okay so I've just let the tire pressure down um, <coughs> Let's sort of see how it goes on this, um, well, just in general. Um, so it was, um, tire pressure was 30, 38. Um, and now it is um, 22, 30. So I've dropped it 8 PSI front and back. I mean, I don't know about tire pressure. We'll see how it goes with these big bikes. Um, I'd rather not be running it that low on the front on the... Um, on the road, I guess? Or well, does it matter? I don't know. Eh, not sure. It, it seemed a little bit harsh before, I guess, um, on that, those rocky sections. Um, and I think just with, um, with a little bit less tyre pressure, um, it's just going to smooth it out a little bit and, of course, provide some better... Uh, some more, uh, more traction. So, we'll see. Speaking about the tyres, um, I've got the TKC, TKC 80s um, on the back and front, uh, that come standard obviously, um, and the rear is already showing signs um, of considerable wear, um, and I've only done what, 750, 800k? Yeah, so I've got, I reckon, 2000k, maybe 2500k, and, and they're going to be fucked. Alright, here's a big hill. A 
big rocky hill. Put away in second gear. Easy. I am puttering around like an old lady though. Um, and look, it's just because it's so wet. Um, there's, some, there's sections and you can't even tell when they come up really. I mean, some of them you can, like here. And it's just slippery as fuck. So, you know, the worst thing, you know, you come around a corner, hit that, you know, too fast, and you fucking wipe out. So I'm not gonna do that, I'm taking it easy. Ugh, fucking mud. I don't like it. God, I'm getting old. My knees are aching. <laughs> standing up too much it is amazing how um just a little bit of hill up and down hill windy stuff a little bit more technical riding really warms you up um like i'm sweating now i know i've got a shitload of layers on um but yeah i'm actually really quite warm see i don't do i really want to go through the mud i don't want to go through the mud fuck it i'm not going through the mud Fuck you, mud. Yes, yeah, so for off-road, the tyre pressure 22 with 30, I'm happy with. Uh, in this sort of terrain, I think it's working well. Even the front seems a little bit more planted. But then the question is, well, you know, is that too low to run on the highway? I don't know. Will I get excessive front tyre wear uh, running at 22 psi. I mean, uh, who knows? I didn't on the dirt bike, but then I guess there was like less weight too. So I have to do some research. Slippery shit! Oh fuck! Fuck! That was slippery. If anyone uh, is watching this and they're in Victoria, you know, Central Victoria sort of thing, this I really recommend this track. It's um, basically centre road um, through the bush between St Arnold and Avoca. Um, it's just a really nice ride. And it's about 60k, I think, of uninterrupted dirt road. I mean, you'd find it a bit boring if you had a dirt bike, probably, but um, if you've got an adventure bike or a um, you know, 650 or something, um, yeah, I reckon this is pretty cool. Maybe when it's dry, for your adventure bike riders. And I must say, I am really happy with the gearing on this. Like I said, I dropped the uh, front front sprocket down one tooth. Um, and I, yeah, really happy with the gearing. Just about anything you can do in second gear. Um, of this sort of stuff. But then you get those gnarly bits where you just want that little bit more. And... Uh, you got first to get you out of trouble. But yeah, no, really happy with it. All right, I was gonna stop at some point, wasn't I? I think I remember saying I had old man knees and shit. I think maybe here might be a good spot. There's even a seat for me. Oh, got some air. <laughs> Getting some air on the 1090. Oh, yeah. Hills. Drop it into first for this one, I reckon. I mean, it's not going to look like anything for you guys. But it kind of is steep as fuck. I'm a bit worried about this slippery shit though. Oh 
it's all good. Too slippery crossover. Over again. Oh, I gotta sit down. Whew. Nice. So I'm applying most of my brake, to be honest, is on the front when I do this sort of stuff. Um, but you've got to be really careful because, I mean, well, it's not like it's going to lock up here because I've got traction, I've got uh, ABS on the front, but um, you don't want to get run it away from you either. So. I use mainly mainly front brake on um, downhills, um, and then just rear, just sort of as needed. See, I've actually I'm doing these downhills. I'm actually putting my ass all the way back, and I'm actually my ass is touching the rear rack on some of these bits. Um, not that it probably it doesn't have to, but it, yeah. So I'm wondering how the uh, the giant loop uh, coyote bag is going to go. Um, I set that all up all, all up the other day, and um, was quite happy with it. Um, I should have I should have actually done today with my full load, all my gear. I mean, I, obviously I'm not camping, but I should have just had it all on there, so I just knew how it would perform. I didn't think of that. Um, Look at this motherfucker! Hey, look at this dirty bastard! <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad. It looks fucking terrifying. I <laughs> know oh, I've done it before on the DR. I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, it's, it's fucking easy. It just looked daunting, you know, from the from back there. I mean, you probably can't tell on the on the camera, but um, yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure I've already said it, but I love this track. This is really good. There's nothing terrifying, scary. Like, oh my god, can I make it? Should I be here on my own? Sort of shit. I mean, it's all quite manageable. Um. But it's just really enjoyable. These, I, I love whoops and things and hills and and all that. It, it's sli it is slippery as fuck, so um, I'd recommend if you're going to bring a hey, yeah an adventure bike out here, um, unless you know if you sort of know what you're doing, best do it uh, when it's dry. Am I going the right way? Oh, is that it? Red Bank, Centre Road. Oh, that is it. Huh. Well, see, this is... Should I go up here? I'm going to go up here for a little bit. This is where I get into trouble, people. So, go, oh, let's just check this track out. So, that way, it, that's back takes me back out onto the main road and then back towards home or to Avoca. Um... Well, I was just sort of really enjoying that. I don't want it to end. Look at those fucking clouds. They can fuck off. This track, I think, is just a continuation of the track that I was on. So, um, in theory, the conditions should be pretty much the same. You know, like, so... <laughs> And it has been recently graded, so yeah, it should be alright. It'll be fine. What are you worried about? I'm on my own and I've got a riding a 200 kilo motorbike. <laughs> B 
But if I drop it, will I be able to pick it up by, on my own? I don't know. <laughs> Here's some advice though, guys, with your big adventure bikes. Not that I'm an experienced with adventure bike rider. I just, you know, my, my own personal thoughts, my own opinion. If you can't pick up a fully loaded adventure bike off the ground, um, then it's time to hit the gym or um, buy a different bike. We'll pack less, pack lighter. Now, of course, there's going to be exceptions to that when you're um, tired and you, you know you're exhausted in the desert and you can't get any good purchase on the ground and you know everything is just turns to shit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you might struggle, but honestly, if you can't pick up your own bloody bike, get a different bike or go to the gym. Having said that, I haven't actually tried to pick this one up yet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really should have um, packed all my camping gear, even water and food, just get that weight. Um, I'll have to do a video of it, but um, I'm looking at about 12, 12 kilo, maybe up to 14 kilo of gear weight without food and water. So, with food and water, um, fuck this is steep, with food and water, um, I mean I still, it'll be under 20 kilo, you know, depending, um, but yeah, um, and I'm, I'm happy with that, 20 kilo worth of gear, um, I mean I wouldn't, I, I don't think you should, there's no need to have more than that, there really isn't, because um, of course my suspension is set up for, um, for a uh, 125 kilogram rider, and that's without gear. That's um, one fat bastard, 125 kilo. Um, now, when I ordered the bike, um, that's what I weighed. Um, and I thought that's a fairly safe option because I was losing weight, but you know, bit, uh, you know, my uh, competition weight, I guess you call it, um, you know, powerlifting stuff, is like 137. Um, as high as, not always, but as high as 137. So, um, I thought, you know, 125 kilo, that's fair enough. If I get a little bit heavier, well, you know, it'll be all right. I don't want to get over 130 anymore anyway. Um, except then, I just, I don't know, I got motivated, uh, whatever. <laughs> I got a bit more active and I lost, I dropped, uh, what, nine kilo. So, I'm now 116 kilo. Um, set up on the bike set up for 125 so anyway I'm sure I'll, I'll put some weight back on oh I know I will I'll um, you know I enjoy the weights and stuff and I've, I've uh, I wanted to get down to you know 115 maybe 110 even um, sort of lean up a bit and then uh, and then put some weight back on just to increase the lean muscle mass and all that sort of crap anyway so um, my weight does fluctuate quite a bit I am loving these hills oh yeah get some air baby okay where the fuck are we steep as fuck Oh, one-handed while I adjust my helmet. <sighs> Fuck, this is steep. It's got me plenty of traction, but jeez. Okay, that's the end of the line. I'll just have a break here and work out where the fuck I'm going now.